Hi everyone, we'll continue to move through this topic on vectors by examining a very key vector idea, the dot product. In this video, we'll define the dot product and then look to how the dot product works when our vectors are expressed in their component form. We'll scatter some examples as we go to hammer home this content. By now, you should be getting comfortable with how we add two vectors. Say if we have our vectors, let's call them A and B, in the column vector form like this. Then when we add them together, all we are doing is adding the top entry of A, A1, with the top entry of B, B1, and the same for the bottom entries. Subtraction was very similar. We have also looked at multiplying a vector by a scalar, in which the scalar just multiplies each individual entry like this. The next logical question would be to ask whether we can multiply two vectors together. Does this even make sense? Well, that's where the dot product comes in. Using the same column vector notation for vectors a and b, this is the definition of the dot product. It's not really multiplication, it's a new operation which involves addition and multiplication. Pretty much, you multiply the first entry of each vector together, that's a1, b1, multiply the second entry of each vector together, which is a2, b2, and then you add the two resulting numbers to leave you with a1, b1 plus a2, b2. Remember, a1, b1, a2, and b2 are just going to be some numbers, meaning all we are doing is multiplying and adding numbers. The result is that the dot product will just be a number. It will not be a vector. So, for example, if these are our vectors a and b, then the dot product of a and b will just be the top entries multiplied together, 1 times 2, plus the bottom entries multiplied together, 4 times 3, and that's 2 plus 12, which is 14. The dot product between A and B is 14. One thing to note is that the dot product is sometimes referred to as the scalar product. I'll tend to run with dot product just because I think it serves as a reminder for the notation you have to use. That is, you represent the dot product between two vectors with a little dot directly in the middle of the vectors. Do not use a multiplication sign. So we know what the dot product is, but if we jump over to the component form of a vector, does anything change? Well, no. The component form and the column vector form represent the exact same thing, so of course the dot product between two vectors will be the same, regardless of the form we represent our vectors in. Recall that our component form will look like this for vectors a and b. The first entry in the equivalent column vector form is now just paired with the i unit vector, and the second entry is paired with the j unit vector. This means the dot product will be the two numbers in front of the i's times together, a1, b1, plus the two numbers in front of the j's times together, a2, b2. Our dot product is a1, b1 plus a2, b2, identical to before. Let's take our example from earlier, but now with our vectors in the component form. If we want the dot product between the two vectors, we first multiply the numbers in front of the two i's, 1 times 2. Remember, if it's just an i with no number outside the front, this is just the same as saying there's a 1 there. To complete the dot product, times the numbers in front of the j's together, 4 times 3, and add this to our result. Our answer is again 14. The only place where you have to be a little careful with the dot product is when negatives are involved. So take this example in the component form. When the minus sign appears, remember that the number in front of the i in vector a isn't just 6, it's negative 6. So our resulting dot product between a and b will be negative 6 times negative 4, plus negative 5 times 5, which is 24 minus 25, negative 1. And that's all sweet, because the dot products can definitely be negative. Remember, although the column vector form and component form look different, when we take the dot product between two vectors in either form, the resulting answer will be the same number. Let's stop there for this video. We learnt today that the dot product is a multiplication of sorts between two vectors, but it has a unique definition, which is up on screen. Taking the dot product of two vectors will result in a number. Even for two vectors in component form, their dot product will be exactly the same as in the case when they are column vectors. Get plenty of practice taking the dot product between vectors. I'll see you in another video.